When you think about sound, is there anything that immediately comes to mind? Were you listening to a tune in the car, on the radio, on the way to work perhaps? Or in the garden, listening to some beautiful bird song? Perhaps you might think of something less pleasant, like a police siren for example. That said, do you really understand what sound is? Before you can understand sound, it is essential to know how your ears function, as what goes on inside your ears is what allows you to hear in the first place. If we take the example of a person talking, the movement of their mouth creates waves of moving air. These sound waves then travel into your ear canal and hit your eardrum. This in turn causes the ossicles to vibrate, which consists of three small bones, known as the malleus, the incus and the stapes. They also have easier names to remember of hammer, the anvil and the stirrup. The vibrating ossicles then transmit the sound waves to the cochlea, being a small snail-shaped structure inside your head. Your cochlea contains small cells known as hair cells that convert sound waves into signals and it is these signals that are sent to your brain. And then you get to hear someone's voice, just like me. As we just explained, you will hear when your ears process sound waves produced by an object, where the object produces waves by vibrating, where such vibrations push against the surrounding air. These vibrations effectively cause the air to expand, otherwise known as rarefaction, and compress, which causes areas of high and low pressure as the sound waves move toward your ears in the form of waves. It is the wavelength that determines a sound's frequency, where wavelength is simply the distance between waves. For sound waves, wavelength refers to one complete cycle of rare faction, where the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency of the sound. As we know, frequency is measured in hertz, where one hertz corresponds to one cycle, and in this case, one sound wave per second. Frequency determines the pitch of a sound, where high-pitched sounds have a high frequency and low-pitched sounds have a low frequency. To give an example of this, imagine a very deep note, say one that would come from a bass guitar or a key at the lower end of a piano. This note has low frequency, meaning it is low pitched. Now if one considers a very bright note, perhaps one from a violin or the higher end of a piano, this one has a higher frequency, meaning it is high pitched. Most humans can hear sounds between 65 Hz and 23,000. But that does not mean that ultrasonic sounds are comfortable or even safe to listen to. It is the amplitude that determines the loudness of a sound, where amplitude refers to a sound wave's size or height. Volume is directly related to amplitude, with volume referring to a sound wave's intensity. A good example of this is the plucking of a guitar string, where quite simply the harder you pluck, the louder the sound will be. This is because more energy is being provided to the string, thus producing larger sound waves. Whereas plucking a slightly lighter string provides much less energy, resulting in much smaller sound waves. The effect is like dropping a large rock or a small pebble into the water. The louder the sound, the larger the splash. Does that make sense? Now, do you remember that tune you were listening to in the car this morning? Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how vibrations from the car radio created the sound waves. These were captured by your ears, which sent signals to your brain, and the pitch, loudness and volume of the sounds you heard depended on the frequency, amplitude and intensity of the sound waves 